Guru Nation, welcome back to another episode of Random Musings from the Clinical Trials Guru. Uh, the podcast, you know, I've only been doing like two uh, a week for the last couple of weeks. It's just been so busy, but we've gonna, we're going to go a little bit, you know, take a deep dive with Chris Sauber uh, into a question that somebody sent me on uh, Instagram, actually. And what this person is asking, let me pull it up. But basically, it's about... Um, sites okay and it's actually good it's a good uh philosophical question they actually texted me this one 949-415-6256 uh chris before while i look for the question you want to uh introduce yourself for those that don't know for the uninitiated i think you just did introduce me uh chris sauber uh dan and i do a lot of uh different things uh together business wise um Prior to starting this podcast, we we're discussing uh, our stock portfolio for our, our company. Um, but yeah, do all kinds of things: uh, client services, As academies. You can see behind me, yep. this is our services. We're very affordable. We are not crooks. We are not jerks. I know usually when people say that, it's the opposite is true. But for us, definitely not. Ask around. We'll give you references. Plenty of references. Yep. yep. Okay. Absolutely. Here's the question. It, it was by text, so anybody can text me, 949-415-6256. Hey, Dan, I recently began transition from a lead coordinator at two different sites to starting my own site with a physician I know. I didn't realize how much of a difference it was. I thought it would be easy since I was taking care of many of the day-to-day -day site stuff before, but I've realized I always had a safety net, and being a director slash owner is a leap of faith. Okay, to my question. I've heard you say not to turn down studies if you think you can enroll even one patient. But in my PI specialty, almost all studies are very invasive and require biopsies or lots of imaging. And although I've heard back from many sponsors, I fear if I accept one of those studies and can't get a patient to agree to that much work, my site's reputation will go downhill. In this case, would you accept the study since you have a lot of potential subjects and hope that some agree to the study requirements or try to find an easier, less invasive study to begin with, which is a rarity? So I would like to offer some clarification real quick. Okay. Um, so he said, he said, you said never turned down a she. I think it's a oh, she. she. Okay. So she said never turned out you, she said, you said never turned down a study if you can get at least one patient. I don't think that's necessarily probably what you've said. Maybe it is, but when you're starting out, that's true, right? Yeah, she, that's it's true. exactly right. She's starting out. When you are established, you can be more picky, of course. Right, of course, right, of course. Right. We have many clients who are, uh, you know, of the SCS who are uh, have the right to be more picky. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. We talked um, about one yesterday, Chris, you and I. We did. And I would say certainly do not take on a study unless you can get that one patient. Um, However, when you're starting out, for example, if your physician's research naive, you need something on their CV, right? So even if you can't get a patient for a study, you may even take that, right? Just so you can show that something on the CV, yeah, we've participated in this study, PI has experience. Um, just be very careful with that because you will burn bridges. Yeah, so be careful. But, it, you know, here's the saving grace for this stuff. If these procedures are invasive and it's tough to convince patients. Guess what? You're not going to be the only site that mm -hmm. is dealing with that. So as long mm -hmm. as you're not an outlier, meaning every site's enrolling 10 and you only enroll one or zero, uh, like if everybody takes on the study and they all say they can enroll five to 10 and they only enroll one or two and you only enroll one or two, guess what? You're in the average. You're not an outlier. Okay. Right. Now, if you enroll zero, Okay, it's a little bit um, of a trickier thing. If you uh, enroll zero and everybody else enrolls 10, uh, it's going to look bad. Yeah. Um, so, the, yeah. Uh, and we're, I mean, even when you're, even when you're established, sometimes the budget's good enough to where you can take on a study and maybe you're not sure you can enroll that many patients, but the budget's good enough to justify, hey, if we can even get one, Mm -hmm. You know, this is a good study as far as uh, uh, keeping the patients enrolling and all that kind of stuff. So business developments, um, it's more art, less science. So on a tangent here, what's the highest completed patient total you've ever seen for a budget? And I know you don't look at a lot of budgets anymore. Yeah, but that I've you been can recall, MIA. 
what you can recall, what's the largest completed patient total you've seen? Oh, I've seen um, 1.3 million. Total. No, no. Yeah, but for that was like for 10 patients or something. No, no, one patient. So that'd be what, 130,000? Yeah, that was a really tough Alzheimer's one from what I remember. And it was like a couple years. Okay. A couple years study. Uh, That's right around the top I've seen too. You know, 100,000. Yeah. And we didn't get, we didn't get any patients for that one either. <laughs> yeah. Oh, was that the study over at Global? Yeah. Yeah. But we okay. you know, just I for anybody watching, that. for anyone listening, ignore what you just heard about the name because it means. Oh. Nothing. Uh, but yeah, that's the one. Well, that that's name's going. One. That name's going away anyhow. So. Oh well, yeah, guys, we're we're <laughs> merging actually, and it's going to be a nice big clinic. We're merging yep. two sites, which uh, brings up another point, like. Um, What's better, you know, to have multiple small sites or, and this is more philosophical question, but multiple small sites or like focus on making one big site, in your opinion? My I don't opinion? think there's right or wrong answer. So, I mean, you know, um, it's just good to, I think the answer depends on the owner's DNA and the owner's preference sure. or excitement or structure. So, so I think one is safer than the other. I think having many small sites is probably safer. Yes. In terms of if you do something to your reputation, you haven't tarnished all reputation. Right. And it's also better for owners like with a slight ADHD uh, on their spectrum, like me. However, I think it's easier to run one big site than many small sites. I agree. I think it's easier to run. I agree. And people but, always ask me, why haven't you ever created like just one big clinic and why have you done just a bunch of small clinics? And the answer is usually what you just said. You know, it's safer. I Back in the day, I did want to make a big clinic, a really, really big clinic. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that in order for me to, in order for that to be successful, it couldn't be me managing it. I'm not a good manager. I'm a good, uh, like, I'm a good driver of business and growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not a good manager. So what... <laughs> I can get the business going, you know, and I could throw gasoline on the fire too, but uh, managing something, it just doesn't excite me. It doesn't interest me. So we, you would need to have somebody in place who can do that for sure. you. And at that time I didn't have that. And believe it or not, at that time I was more conservative than I am now. Like I wrote manuals. I wrote, you know, I don't really get into that now unless I have to. Right. Um, but that's that was always the strategy and also diversification you know why why rely on just one doctor even though you can have multiple doctors at one clinic too so there's the diversification argument doesn't always make sense either because you can still have diversification in one mega site right sure but i i think you can ruin your reputation it can be just one pi and ruin the reputation for the whole site for right? the whole site and that's a dangerous thing or one fda audit right Exactly. One FDA audit that goes not so good. Right. You know, and now your entire company. So it's, I agree, it's riskier. It's easier to centralize everything. Yep. It's riskier though. And in a time of diversification, and I have a new quote about to come out for Instagram. If Carlos would, Carlos, if you're watching, get the quote out. What's taking you so long? I, I gave him this quote two days ago and uh, it's so good. It's, um, I actually forgot the quote, but it's basically about underserved communities. Mm -hmm. So most people who have big clinics, you know, they're like near urban centers or suburban, mm -hmm. but it's not exurban, like, you know, way out, like what people call in the boonies, like further than the suburbs, right? Underserved, right. more rural. So the industry is moving, not necessarily towards rural. They don't care rural or not well it's hard to get the patients in a rural area there's just not as many patients to to pick from but you know what the so what i was going to say is the industry shifting towards uh underserved okay mm -hmm. and by rural rural is a loose definition because you're talking about towns with like two hundred thousand people three hundred thousand people well that's not rural well i consider it rural like for example where i'm moving right uh it's still considered rural, even yeah, though it's a know. city. If you have if you have a six digit population, I don't think that's rural. 
Well, the difference between that, because that is the its own the only epicenter, and around it really is rural. Like if mm-hmm. you go around it, there's no such sure. thing as suburbs really, as right. opposed to in a big city. You know, I mean that's compared to like Yuma to L.A. or San Diego. It's rural, and and sponsors don't really get out there. That's like too out of the way, right? Even though there's an airport and everything, so. The industry doesn't care so much about rural or urban. They care about diversity and they care about underserved. Because like something like 80% of all trial participants are Caucasian. It might even be higher. So let's see what Google says. Uh, What does Google say about the um, population? Minimum. Chris is Googling. If this is the Joe Rogan experience, Chris is Jamie. Jamie, pull that up for me, Jamie. (laughs) Okay, so... uh, an urban area, city or town, range between fifteen hundred and fifty thousand people. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, I mean, I think that we're not going to go by the actual definitions, but let's go with underserved and well served. Okay, here we go. I like this definition better. The policy okay. dictated that for a town's application for city status to be accepted, it must fulfill the three criteria: a minimum population of three hundred thousand. See a record of good local government and a local metropolitan character, whatever that means. Yeah. So 300,000 to be a city. Okay. So let's compare the, the place I'm moving to. I don't even think it's 300,000. I think it's 300,000 like in the winter when the snowbirds come in. All I right, think let's it's normally see. like 150,000. I'll Google that. I know right. where you're moving. It says uh, 96,349. Yeah, see, but that number is going to, I bet you that number is going to change when they refresh the year. <laughs> but a lot of people move there. A lot yeah, of people could, have been moving there. That very well could be true. So bottom line, I mean, all this tangent is really to talk about strategy. If you're a site, we had our site owner Academy yesterday, Chris, we talked to one of the people that was on there and we were telling him, look, like what's your plans for the next five years? Because the industry is all about diversification. The industry is all about underserved right now. Mm-hmm. If, you, if that's not part of your mission right now, you run the risk of being irrelevant in a 2025 world. So from a sponsor's perspective, why would they be interested in the underserved communities? I mean, I think I know the answer. A couple of reasons, research naive, and then hopefully you get diversity. Right, I think that's the bigger part of it, right? The research naive, or do you think it's that diversity? Or do you think it's college? It's both, it's both. So I would say it's the research naive that they're after. The research naive is what they're after. Diversity as well. But the diversity is being mandated, you know, by the FDA. And right. so it's kind of forcing them to be, and we got a call in like two minutes, four minutes yes, about diversity with yep. a major CRO. Uh, so this stuff, we're not just talking like, you know, out of our backsides for this podcast. This is real stuff like that's going on. Mm-hmm. So basically last three minutes, uh, we told this, this uh, site, you know, what's your, five-year plan he's like well i'm thinking of expanding i like the small site model he only has one site right now it's like medium-sized site and i said look whatever you do consider underserved populations consider minorities consider african americans consider latin americans expand in those areas even if you have to go to like smaller cities that's actually better that's better for you even though it's harder to find workforce in that area, you might have to train them. You might have to send them to CRC Academy. Mm-hmm. You might need to use our help, CRA Academy, whatever the case may be. But I think that you have to, do, you all, if you're a site, you have to do stuff like this to be relevant in mm-hmm. a 2025 world. It's my prediction. All right, we'll mark that on the calendar. Four, four years from now, we'll see where we're at. We'll, we'll definitely do it. And uh, Chris, anything else you want to say as we wrap up? No, no. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. And we'll catch you all later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.